Hello learners, uh, we are starting with our topic root systems and uh, you have already studied that uh, root is the underground system of any plant and it develops from the radical and now we want to talk about uh, what uh, part of the seed makes the root, it is the radical as you know it by now and when the seed germinates, the radical is the first organ to come out of it and mix the root. So uh, we had studied about some tap root systems and a quick revision was that you had studied three or four types of uh, tap root systems in that we know about the primary root which develops from radical and its secondary and tertiary branches and uh, it performs the function of anchoring the plant and absorbing water. So now uh, a root takes another function, not only just the absorption of water and minerals from the root, uh, from the soil, but also it takes up se several other functions and it modifies itself to help the plant in various other uh, functions. So. Uh, we have sh uh, seen in this chart, which you are seeing, is that uh, tap root modifications, which are conical root, fusiform root, nepiform, and tuberous root. This we have seen examples also. And now we shall be talking about a second category in the table, which you see, and that is adventitious root modifications, tuberous root, fasciculated root, nodulose root, moniliform root, annulated roots, assimilatory roots, epiphytic roots, pneumatophores or the respiratory roots, and sucking roots, uh, prop roots, stilt roots, climbing roots, and clinging roots, and floating roots. Why so many types of adventitious roots I am mentioning? It is because all those different functions which roots take up, According to that, their name has been given. Tuberous root by itself says that it is the uh, uh, modification of root which actually uh, starts accumulating starch or other food form for the uh, tiding over the unfavorable time. So it gets thick and tuberous. And uh, example we have shown you is of Shakarkandi, which you call commonly, and next is fasciculated. And then one very uh, popular is nodulose root. In that, you have been eating uh, gram and uh, uh, leguminous members in which the roots develop small nodules, small bulb-like structures in the root. In that, there are certain bacteria which fix the nitrogen and these uh, nodules provide the nitrogen nutrient to the plant. So then likewise, many other uh, roots are there and uh, each and every type of this root has its own special function and this we'll study uh, in detail later. I did tell you about uh, certain uh, respiratory or pneumatophores roots where uh, in the marshy lands plant uh, is submerged in water. The roots are submerged in water and aerial portion is above. But now since roots can't breathe, so certain portions of the root, they come out and stand like uh, fingers above the water ground water level and they breathe oxygen for the root to function. Roots also need oxygen. So this is how they become breathing or the respiratory roots or the pneumatophores. Sucking roots, you must have heard about uh, cascota, uh, which is basically a angiosperm, but it depends on other plants for its nutrition. So they develop small sucking roots or some small growths from the stem which goes inside the host plant and they connect with the xylem and phloem of that plant and draw nutrition for itself. So this is uh, called sucking root 
or the uh, hostoria and then there are prop roots at 10th point you are seeing prop roots and you must have seen huge trees of banyan jise hum hindi mein bargad bolte so the banyan uh, trees generally they grow very gigantic and they become too huge and then uh, the plant and the branches they become heavy and they need support so certain branches certain roots they develop from the stem branches and they go deep into the soil and uh, they develop a, a pillar kind of strength for the plant to support its huge body so then are the stilt roots stilt roots are like uh, side branches coming out of the lower part of the stem and they provide extra support to the plant to stand erect all right so uh, it is just like you must have seen some ropes being pulled to erect some shamiana so these stilt roots are like that and they are helping the plant in developing uh, balance so then there are climbing roots because suppose if the stem of the plant is weak and it cannot stand on its own then it will not get sufficient sunlight to do photosynthesis now need of the plant is to take support of some plant or wall around them and the uh, roots basically they help the plant in climbing up on that support so these are called climbing roots then there are clinging roots uh, similarly small roots which cling to various objects around them and they provide strength and they help the um, plant to uh, basically get exposed to the sunlight so that it is able to survive and last is floating roots floating roots are the ones for the aquatic plants plants which stay in pond or slow flowing streams etc and uh, the plant must not go below the water level so there are certain parts of the roots which develop like floaters and uh, they fill up with air and they help the plant to remain on the surface of the water so this is how various uh, modifications of the root actually help the plant to survive then next is um, uh, how do we uh, basically uh, see the adventitious root modifications so we have already uh, talked about uh, tuberous fasciculated nodulose monoliform and annulated uh, roots and in this table you are seeing their examples as well so tuberous root is as in sweet potato and uh, fasciculated root as in dahlia and nodulose root as in mango and ginger monoliform roots as in uh, s- um, s- grasses and uh, annulated room as in ipecac and uh, you can see certain pictures now uh, where advent- adventitious root modifications have been shown so these are the examples a b c of tuberous roots fasciculated roots and nodulose roots right so let's move ahead and let's see some more pictures of some other roots this is the moniliform root uh, which is figure d and annulated root which is in ipecac and uh, assimilatory root or the epiphytic roots as found in some orchids so uh, modification for the better gaseous exchange uh, we have already talked about uh, nematophores and in the man- mangrove plant where they perform the function of respiration so rhizophora again is the plant example for such uh, roots then uh, let's uh, see another picture in this picture what you see i have circled red with some portion of the plant where you see small projections coming out of the stem these are the hostoria hostoria 
perform the function of sucking nutrition from the uh, host plant. And uh, these hostoria are present in cascuta and certain varieties of ipomia and also in money plant, commonly known as money, money plant. So then these are another few pictures. First, A is the picture of uh, pneumatophores, which are the respiratory or the breathing roots. Then next is cascuta, which is uh, a plant surviving on other plants for its nutrition. Then uh, let's move on. This is the prop root. We were talking about burger tree, and this is how the roots that support the plant and maintain its balance. So this is the bunion tree, which you know commonly. And then stilt root were present in sugarcane. I told you about this, that certain roots from the sides of the plant in the aerial portion, they develop and they provide extra support to the plant because generally you see that the sugarcane is a very tall kind of plant and it needs extra anchorage. So strong anchorage is provided by these uh, roots, all right? So uh, these are the climbing roots and they uh, generally develop in the weak stems where the plant needs extra support to climb on any of the supports available. So next is the clinging roots and uh, then modification for buoyancy and respiration. We have already talked about uh, floating roots of juicia and also there is one very very common uh, plant ishornia which uh, has very beautiful flowers of purple color light pink uh, color and beautiful uh, flowers they come on the shining uh, uh, leaves and uh, the bulbs which get filled up with the air actually provide the plant a help to float on the surface of water. So uh, this Ishonia I was talking about is a big uh, problem for uh, our environment because they uh, grow very fast and they exhaust all the oxygen available in the water. And uh, then the fish and the other uh, aquatic animals cannot survive because there is uh, very less oxygen left for them. So this is how Ishonia is creating some problem in the environment right now. So let's talk about certain other functions of a root. Uh, it gives anchorage. Uh, it supports the plant firmly in the ground. So this is the mechanical function. Then absorption of water and minerals. And uh, then special functions, uh, we talked about uh, that uh, certain modifications of the root, they perform special physiological functions like food storage, assimilation, absorption, atmospheric moisture, sucking food from the host, um, better gaseous exchange, and uh, mechanical functions uh, like uh, buoyancy, uh, balancing the plant on the water surface and uh, sto uh, stronger anchorage and climbing. So I hope by now you are uh, quite clear about the various functions roots perform. Now let's talk about what is the inner structure of these roots, uh, what kind of tissues make a root. So uh, we will talk about dicot roots and the monocot roots and we'll try to understand the difference between two types of roots. So generally what we do is we take a root and we try to cut it transversely and take a very thin slice of the tissue and try to see it under microscope. So when we see it under the microscope, then a lot of structures are, are visible and we can see all the tissue that composes the transfer section, uh, uh, the sec section and how the structure of the root is formed. So what we get to see under the microscope, I'll explain it layer by layer, moving from outside to the inside. All right. 
So imagine the way you cut uh, certain salads transversely, for example, um, some onions which you cut uh, transversely. So the structures are visible under the mic microscope are, um, let's say, a uh, dicot root of gram. The outermost layer uh, is epibloma. It is the single outermost layer and thin walled cells. And some cells are prolonged to form unicellular root hairs and it protects and absorbs water. Then next layer is called cortex. It is a large zone, means multi-layered, too many layers. And uh, these are thin walled cells. They are parenchymatous tissue. They have lot of intercellular space and uh, it can store food and water for the root. Next, now you can see in this figure, uh, if you are able to see uh, point one, which is written as root hair. Uh, root hair emerge from epiblema, the outermost layer. And these root hairs are generally single celled. They increase the absorption area of the root. Then uh, after the epiblema, you are seeing that uh, number three cortex, which has multi uh, layers of uh, thin walled cells. And between the cells, there is lot of intercellular space. And the main function I told you already is the storage of food and helping in conduction of water and minerals. So now, after the cortex, there is layer number four, which is called endodermis. Can you locate on the diagram? Yes, it is number four, endodermis. Endodermis is basically a layer which cuts off the cortex from the um, vascular tissue inside. And this um, endodermis has generally uh, certain special cells which have Casparian strips. Casparian strips are the thickenings on the wall so that there is no wastage of water flowing from outside to inside or inside to outside. And this is how they give a direction to the flow of water inside the root. And um, the cells which are, um, the endodermis cells which are in front of xylem, they have thin walls. They are special cells, they are called as passage cells. They create some kind of passage for the movement of liquid from cortex to the vascular tissue. So. Inside the endodermis layer is the layer called pericycle and inner side, inner side of pericycle has lot of connective tissue or the conjunctiva tissue and uh, pith is in the center. Now the main conduct of water will happen through the tissue called xylem, xylem and phloem. So xylem is responsible for movement of water and phloem is responsible for movement of food items or the nutrients. So this is how these two tissues, xylem and phloem, they perform the function of movement of water and food material, which is in the form of starch or glucose, uh, which is synthesized in the green part of the plant but the movement has to happen through all the plant body up to the roots. So now we have to understand uh, that what kind of uh, these tissue are, xylem and phloem, what kind of tissue they are. So can you see the label in the diagram? Uh, xylem is uh, eight and nine. Look at this, eight and nine. Uh, you see this uh, difference in the size of the cells? Yes, uh, yeah, large uh, cells which are looking large, number nine, are called metaxylem. It is the older xylem which has large lumen and uh, protoxylem which is comparatively new and smaller cells. And then there is phloem, patches of phloem in between the xylem tissue. So. 
then uh, this phloem is responsible for the movement of starch and sugars. All right, so uh, let's move on to um, vascular bundles. What happens generally is xylem and phloem, the patches they lie on uh, alternate radii. Suppose there is a circular structure of the root which is in the microscope, you are seeing it and uh, you can imagine one radius from the center to the periphery, there is one line. So now xylem and phloem, they lie in patches on different radii and uh, uh, the vascular bundles are radial and the xylem is exact where protoxylem, the first form, the smaller cells, uh, they have narrow vessels and tracheids, they lie towards the periphery and the metaxylem differentiates later and it has wider vessels and tracheids and they lie towards the center. So depending on the number of xylem patches, a root can have two patches, so they are called diac. When they have uh, three, four, five and up to six patches, accordingly they are called triarch, uh, tetrarch, pentarch and hexarch. So up to six uh, patches of xylem can be seen in a root. So now let's look at the monocot root. You remember we have two categories of plants. One is monocot, one is dicot. Dicot example is uh, gram and monocot uh, plant example is uh, maca or uh, the corns. Uh, so, the, these two belong to two different categories, hence their root structures are also quite different. So let's study about the monocot root. Monocot root, when we cut it uh, transversely and try to see the structure inside the root, then it shows the following structures in the figure. Now you can see in the figure there are... Uh, uh, unicellular hair, just like the dicot root, epiblema, and then uh, cortex, just same to, as si uh, similar to the dicot. But uh, the phloem and uh, xylem, they have different positions. Here you are seeing that metaxylem is towards the center, protoxylem is towards outside, and there are, in between, there are certain uh, patches of phloem. Uh, number four, which you see, is the phloem. Five is the Casparian strip. It is the thickened part of the endodermis, whereby the flow of liquid is channelized or given direction. And number six, you are seeing, is the metaxylem. And seven is the center or the pith where the storage of food can happen. Then number eight is the endodermis. And number nine you are seeing is the protoxylum, and number ten is the pericycle. So this is how uh, different uh, monocot and dicot roots they differ from each other. Then uh, now we will talk about um, uh, let's differentiate dicot and monocot roots. So you can see in this uh, table that the number of vascular bundles, if you see on the top of the table, dicot roots, they can have two to six kind of uh, vascular bundles, but monocot root has many, many bundles. So this condition is called polyarc. So if we have two bundles, they are diarc. If there are so many bundles, they are called polyarc. So dicot root is di to six hexarc. But monocot root has many, uh, many of the vascular bundles, so it is called polyarch. Now, uh, pericycle, the seat of origin of lateral roots, or the vascular and the cork cambium. So, uh, and seat of origin of lateral roots only. So, this is how pericycle has two functions in dicots, but only single function in monocots. So. We'll study about it later. So, in detail, cambium is present in dicots, but it is 
absent in monocots. Secondary growth is generally present in dicots, but it is absent in monocots. Pith is very small or absent in case of dicot roots, but it is large in case of monocot roots. So let's move on. The origin of lateral roots is endogenous, that is, it is uh, from a deeper layers, and the seat of origin is pericycle, where the uh, cells opposite the protoxylum they divide and they form a hump in the endodermis. Can you see this figure? And look at this figure. So in this uh, very first figure, you see that there are pink and blue. Two, two layers I have denoted with different color. Now they start dividing. And in uh, figure three, you can see that from two, now four layers have been formed. And slowly, one hump starts appearing. And in the last figure, if you've seen uh, that the meristem uh, gets organized and a lateral root starts developing from the deeper layer of the cells. This is how this hump penetrates into the cortex and emerges as a lateral branch of the root. All right. So this is how lateral roots develop. So secondary growth, uh, see, when the plants are young and they are herbaceous, you can re really turn them, they are so soft, so they don't have any woody structure in them, and they are soft when they are young. But second year, third year, you get to feel that plant, plant has become stronger. Now you can't turn them. Why this happens? It happens because of the secondary growth in, this, in, in the dicot roots. So roots grow in length with the help of apical meristem. It is called primary growth. And apart from the primary growth, the root grows in width. And in width, when they grow, it is increase in the girth. So this increase is called secondary growth. And how it happens is uh, that secondary growth is supported when the peric pericycle cells we had shown you in the figure the pericycle cells outside the protoxylum, they divide and they form a strip of cambium. Cambium means the cells having ability to divide their meristematic. So uh, now these cells, they divide and they cut cells from on outside and inside. And uh, the vascular cambium appears in the conjunctive tissue on the inner side of the phloem bundle. So uh, we, we must understand that plant in the beginning is green and young, but after some time it becomes woody and strong. So how it happens? It happens with the help of secondary growth happening in the root and the stem. So uh, how the process starts, let's see this figure. In figure one, you are seeing that the vascular bundles, they join, and this yellow colored line is actually the cambium cell, which has a cell division uh, potential in it, and it starts cutting tissue, xylem, and phloem on the both sides. So in the second figure that you are seeing an advanced stage, and in the last figure, you are, what you are seeing is that uh, xylem has cut uh, secondary xylem and secondary phloem. So secondary xylem and sec secondary phloem, they have a lot of xylem tracheids and vessels, and they are stronger. They make the actual wood, the wood portion which you see in the trees, in the stem, in the roots. So that hard woody portion develops due to secondary growth in the plants. So uh, students, now you have learned about root, its modification, its functions, and its secondary growth. I hope uh, by now you have understood the concept of structure and also the functions that a root performs. Thank you so much learners.